Hola, thank you so much for tuning in. I am Solomon Wangwe, the co-founder and chief Kazia Mkono, as we like to say, for Goshen Acquisitions and Grand Acres Limited, the best land developers in Kenya, hands down. Hands down. Yeah, I'm so excited today because hands I get down. to have a unique conversation uh, with one of our newest, most critical partners at Goshen Acquisitions and Grand Acres. Uh, I'll introduce him briefly, uh, but the, the, the topic for today basically has to do with master planning. Uh, you've heard of us uh, speak of our Acacia Cove compound in Anuki that is professionally master planned by award-winning architects, one of, uh, I, I'd say, at least the continent's top architects, uh, that I know for sure. Uh, but I'll let the gentleman toot his own, <laughs> his own horn. Uh, and what that means exactly for you when you're looking at land investments. What does it mean? Does it really matter who has done the master plan or subdivision scheme? Uh, we say it does. And today's conversation is going to be about that. So without further ado, uh, with me I have Mr. Andrew Kusewa. Uh, uh, he is the principal at Buchatman and Partners. Uh, did I say that right? Buchatman? Buchatman, no, you got I'm, the G. Yeah. So we have the. Okay, yeah, you got it right. You got it right. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, you want to tell everyone what your expertise is and uh, a little bit about yourself? Okay, so Solomon, first of all, our conversations have started a long time ago. We won't go into that right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, my name is Andrew Kusewa Kilonzi, uh, Director Buchatman and Partners Architects. Thank you for that very flowery introduction, but just a few facts to get right. Number one in Africa, 98 worldwide. Now you remember. Thank okay? you, sir. So, uh, <laughs> but thanks for the introduction. I think uh, it's just been a great journey having this discussion with you around master planning and in particular Acacia Cove. Yeah. So today, let's speak master plans. Excellent. And uh, and a long time ago, Andrew is, is referring to is he and I uh, went to uh, high school together. Uh, and for those of you haters out there, yes, we went to the Alliance, the Alliance High School, high school uh, just in case you are wondering. But uh, yeah, so th thanks for joining us. Uh, you know, I just wanted us to have a conversation about uh, what master planning is in your view as a professional. And uh, because, you know, this is the first project we've ever done as Goshen Acquisitions and Grand Acres, where we engaged the professional services of an architect such as yourself, not just an architect, but an architect of your caliber, uh, to do the master planning, subdivision planning for our amazing 47.78 acre compound here in Nanyuki, yeah. which we aptly named Acacia Cove. Yeah. Um, what's your view uh, with this? Because I know it's, you've done so many projects, I, I can't even list them all. What's your professional opinion around our industry, because we're in the business of developing land for yes. investors. Yes. Uh, how many companies like Goshen Acquisitions or Grand Acres have you worked with uh, in the past or currently? What's your general view about the approach uh, for this exercise? Yeah, so I, I think let's start by, by acknowledging where you sit in terms of being a master developer. I think what has been missing um, in, and has informed the planning that you see in our country is master developers who have the idea, the background that master planning is very important. So currently uh, you'll find a lot of the engagements with architects is on people who've already purchased 50 by 100 plots. And we can have a, a long discussion around the 50 by 100 plot and what its impact on planning in the country has been. Mm. Uh, we're actually currently running uh, an internship program and one of the studies is what's the effect of the 50 by 100 block in what you see in urban centers. Mm. So th there has been a lot, and that's a totally separate discussion that has led to the aesthetic you see every time you drive on the new expressway, you drive on thicker highway, around what you're seeing coming up as uh, developments. Yeah. Uh, but your target, of course, is not directly uh, uh, on the 50 by 100 urban plot. Uh, your master planning is more on greenfield sites, but don't get me wrong, those greenfield sites in a few years 
will still have the 100 by 50 block that you're selling. The one eats. Ah, yes. Yeah. They'll still have those. Yeah. And at that time, there'll be urban nodes sprouting in what was currently residential zoned developments. Right. So it's, it's very important as uh, you're in the business of selling land um, and, and, and selling communities is what I want to mm. talk about more that you really understand that you know before you sell the 50 by 100 or any kind of plots that are being developed there has to be a bigger picture around the communities that you're creating and I think our first interaction with Goshen was around that because your business was primarily on selling plots acquiring land subdividing so that you sell to, to people who are buying plots of certain sizes that fit there Yes, their, yeah. their, their, their budget. Mm. So the key thing here is the transition that Goshen has had is now you're a developer creating communities. Now to develop a community, rather than focusing on just selling um, the plots that have been subdivided, there needs to be a big, bigger picture thinking around that subdivision. It has to yeah. be planned very well, it has to have certain amenities, and, and for me, one of the things that is very critical around master planning is context. What's the context you're master planning for? Because mm. if you're doing a master plan and a subdivision in an area that is more urban compared to the vision you're trying to sell here in uh, Nanyuki, of course, you have to relate to the context. So yeah. a lot of elements go into the master planning and we can discuss a couple that were very important around, you know, the Acacia Code master plan. Yeah. yeah, no, that's uh, that's a good point to make, uh, es es especially around the whole 50 by 100 phenomenon, because a lot of our customers ask us, why can't you sell me a 50 by 100 oh, sure. that will be cheaper, yeah. that I can afford? And, and the simple answer, truthfully speaking, is that I wish I could, I just can't. In, in, the, in the legal framework context. Yes. In a lot of places where you find 50 by 100, they're not supposed to be allowed. But because of corruption and shortcut culture that we operate in, it is, it is predominant. Yes. And uh, you know, value-based uh, principles that you know, we espouse as Grand Acres and Goshen Acquisition simply prevent us from exploring that option yeah. unless there's legal framework that allows it. And you know, there's other projects we've, we're doing now that are 50 by 100. Again, context, Yes. urban, on the highway, utilities, touching yes. tarmac, it yeah. makes sense. But in, in this instance, for Acacia Cove, uh, it felt more residential. Yes. And uh, I know the previous owner actually tried to subdivide into quarters and had issues. They, they were not permitted to, yeah. uh, to create them. Uh, we, we still don't know exactly why, mm -hmm. but we felt that half acres were more apt and uh, ideal for for the environment this is this is why we approached you guys because we do neighbor a, a dam a public dam mm. we have an amazing outcropping of acacia trees around the dam yeah. the site itself gently sort of undulates yes. into the dam and we felt like we can't just chop it up into rectangles and squares as is typical yeah. let's employ the services of uh Boo Hartman and associates yes uh, to help us bring the best out of this and i have to say you guys did a Amazing job. The surveyors and the guys uh, at uh, survey department gave us hell uh, because but of we the... we finally <laughs> got an approval. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, the shapes are unique. They are trapezoid, uh, as, as we like to say, uh, because they all pay respect to the topography of the yeah. site. Yeah. And uh, I think all our customers so far have appreciated that. Yeah. So, you know, I'll say, you know, kudos to you and the team for, for what you did. But more pertinently, on this issue of 50 by 100s, in your view, or even quarters, or it's, let's say even acres, mm. uh, as an architect looking at the site before it was subdivided, what, what would have been your, your preference? Uh, yeah, so, so, so let me start by saying that the conversation did start of paper. Mm. And you understand that. Of course, we engage by having a discussion around what it is that you're trying to achieve. Yeah. Um, the conversation started by a long drive. Mm. And, and it's always very important to understand what context you're master planning or designing for. So we could have had a lot of discussions where you'd have sold the idea that, you know, you're next to Mount Kenya, you're in a new key. But if I didn't walk the site, there's definitely certain uh, ideas around how we develop the master plan that would it have come clear to us. So it's always important to understand that, that context is very, 
critical. Mm. Uh, and yes, you might do desktop studies that for you as a developer before you purchase this. Mm. So there was a desktop study that said, all right, for the, me to purchase this much land, uh, it makes sense that uh, it's this much per acre. Now that was a desktop study, there was visits before even we joined to even suggest that this is the best property to buy and master plan. Yeah. But I, I gotta say that just driving out to Nanyuki, um, there's always expectations, you're not clear on what it is that uh, you're going to be designing. Mm. Um, but when we walked the site, you touched on a couple of things, the drive there, uh, what is the context, what is the neighboring developments that have already been done. Uh, then leading up to the site itself, what's the infrastructure getting up to, to the plot? Yeah. Uh, what's the frontage? What's the visibility? And I think there was, it was very clear that this was more destinational than having frontage. And you touched on it. Right. You know, if you're doing a master plan around uh, a major street or a major highway, it'll be totally different from this one. Yes. So to get to the destination, and you can see the frontage leads to a very thin throat. But yeah. there's a lot of things around the, the land itself that I gotta say were really amazing. Of course, being in Anyuki very early in the morning, there's the vistas to the mountain. You've touched on the existing vegetation on site, the acacias. I think that's where the name Acacia Cove actually came about. Yeah. Uh, of course, as we are developing our master plan, the branding uh, is never really separate from what it is that we're yes, doing. Yeah, yeah, so uh, appropriately so, we go to the site, we saw the acacias, the yellow bugs. Right. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that was very important in walking the site was to understand, yes, uh, you have a lot of existing uh, features in terms of the trees, uh, the key element of course being the dam and right away from me as a sustainable developer and a sustainable designer, mm. it was very critical to understand that if you master planning around that dam, you have to be very conscious about um, you know, how you're going to be draining that site, uh, how you're going to respect uh, any sustainable way leaves or any sustainable swells around the dam, so that when you're designing, you're actually not going to contaminate what the existing um, yes, yes. features are. You have a dam, you have the trees, you have to pay homage to that. Uh, I think uh, it's, 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 it's not so evident when you drive the site that there's quite a bit of a rise and a fall with the topo. Yeah. I've always been bringing you that we need to see the topo, we need to see the topo. Uh, I'd say those lines you see on the site, the trapezoids and the triangles and the curves, were really informed by contour lines. And you, as a developer, you also have to be conscious about how much money you're going to spend yeah. as you're developing. So you respect the land and how it falls the easier it is for you as a master developer in terms of infrastructure, but as well, um, the easier it is for the people who purchase the plots uh, to develop. Yeah. So I think that was very conscious at the back of my mind that the subdivision that we're going to do will need to allow that flexibility for the developers, for you as a developer, master developer, unlocking the infrastructure. And then also I had to be very conscious about um, the flexibility to give the, the buyers in terms of how they build and creating that variation between the different plots rather than creating homogeneity because everything is on one level, everything is very regular. So that was very conscious under the back of our minds as we we're developing this yeah. year. Excellent. I mean, we've used a lot of big words. Yes. Homogeneity, swells, mm. Uh, mm. you know, all. Very all. simple. <laughs> yeah. So just for, for the lay person out there who has never interacted with an architect around yes. master planning. And, and just, just to make the point, uh, you know, as, as land sellers, we're not just land sellers. Yeah. Uh, we are Tuzagi Maproti, Maguta Maguta. Maproti Maguta you know, Maguta. <clears throat> Essentially, whoever you are uh, that is in the business of subdividing or fragmenting pieces of land into smaller plots for sale, really at the end of the day, you're a master developer, as Andrew has used that term a number of times now. And people need to think that way, because what you're doing is you're creating groupings of people and communities. Yes. You're shaping future use, future value. Ideally, you should be doing that in the context of the current laws, policies and regulations from the county about what should be allowed or not allowed. So, mm. uh, you know, th this is one of the main reasons I was, I was happy to have this conversation with you because a, lo a lot of our customers even who like the product, 
don't really appreciate um, the approach yeah. that companies like ours take. Yes. It's not just about chopping land up to sell for a profit. Yeah. It's about giving you value at the end of the day, exactly. uh, including sizes, including the size of the road, the width of the road rather, mm. uh, making sure that we're we're not dumping effluence into public utilities. Yes. Uh, which brings me to my next point. In your in your in your professional view, uh, what do you have to say around the current phenomenon uh, for whether it's quarters, halves, fifty by hundreds that do not do not plan for waste waste uh, management. Yeah. And in, in your view, what does waste management entail? Okay, so Solomon, number one, I think we, we are very aligned in terms of, you use this word several times, if I may also repeat the same commentary, value add. Mm. So I think when you, beyond just, um, you know, conforming to what the statutes say about master planning. So if you talk about master plan development and you're yeah. developing a certain number of plots, there has to be gu guidelines on public amenities that you also create within them. Yeah. Now, it's not just about selling all the plots and it's a, it's a hundred houses and they're all sold yeah. money in the bank. Yeah. So, yeah. You, you talked about, uh, you know, developing communities. So, I think uh, we, we use those rule of terms in terms of saying, listen, if you're developing this many houses, there needs to be communal spaces so that, as you appropriately say, you're develop, master planning a community, communities have communal spaces. Yes. So, that is one key thing that you um, have, have noticed, Goshen, Grand Acres, you don't take for granted. You do create and allow within your business case that there is communal spaces that all these uh, developments eventually, you know, utilize. And these communal spaces need to be distributed so that, of course, everyone has equitable access to them. Uh, right. I think that is one thing that we, we looked at when we were doing the master plan. Um, then again, in terms of value, um, you know, a lot of people say that, you know, when there's, there's what you develop within the community and then the government has to take care of the rest. Mm. And part of taking care of the rest is saying, look, the main road, access to the site needs to be done by the government. Uh, you know, sewerage, you need to connect to sewer. Mm. And if you're not connected to sewer, then you're creating septics on individual stands. So if you're doing a development that has, how many numbers do you get? About 100 plots you're going to have a hundred septic tanks on the development. And mm. what a lot of master developers turn their backs to is, yes, they do subdivide, they do sell because it matches the, the, the cost yeah. and the price that people want to buy at. But where they turn their backs to is, um, how do you dispose of all that waste if there is no central sewer system? So there is controls. And the controls is if you're putting together a certain number of units and there is no access to trunk sewer or any such infrastructure, you need to treat the waste. Right. And, and to treat the waste, you have to create your own waste management system, which comes in many terms. Right. It's your wastewater treatment plants, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, biodigesters maybe that are centrally located so that several plots can also uh, share in that waste disposal. Yeah. Um, but, but beyond just meeting the statutes, I think um, a lot of developers uh, and, and Goshen have taken a lead on this is you, you have to be sustainable. Look, the way, the way subdivisions are happening, the way uh, you know, we are building and not having the right infrastructure, people are not being sustainable. Mm. And sustainability has a big element to the health of the communities that you're creating. Um, course, yeah. I think if you're in urban settlements where you have 100 by 50 plots and everyone is thinking a boho, everyone is thinking a septic system, you can only imagine what you're I mean, drinking. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, for, I know what me, I'm drinking yeah. right now is coffee. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> My question, you know, and I asked, I asked uh, a few people last week when we were shooting a video, uh, because someone asked me, uh, what, what's your issue with 50 by 100s? Uh, or you're just bad-mouthing other people who sell 50 by 100s? Or you think... Uh, the poor should not have access to land investment opportunities so you're speaking against 50 by 100s absolutely not i you know i'm all for 50 by 100s even smaller where it makes sense mm. uh, uh, my point is if you're gonna buy a 50 by 100 you need to know where your waste is going who is providing your your power 
who is managing the utilities. Where are you uh, getting your water from? Right. Will I be able to get a building permit from the county uh, relative to the community I am in? Mm. Zoning and mm. that sort of thing. Mm. Uh, and that's the, the biggest one for me is where is all your crap going? Mm. There's, you know, there's 80, 100 in some cases is, you know, there's a, there's, there's a, there's a development not too far from our site in Acacia Cove where I think there's 3,000 plots, 50 yes. by hundreds. Yes. You know, if all of you are sinking septic tanks, all that crap, literally, you drink from it. <laughs> Is what you're gonna drink from if yeah. you're if you're tapping into the aquifers underground. Yes. No one thinks about that. And and then this also boils down, besides touching on sustainability, it also touches on future value. Yes. Is that really good value for you? Fine, you bought a piece of land, it cost you 150k, yeah. 299, 350, whatever the case may be. Is that really good value? And my, my answer to one of them uh, was fine. You, you've bought eight 50 by hundreds from different companies over the last eight years. They're all over the place. Nakuru, Nanyuki, mm. Kitengela. Uh, my, my answer to them was a bit disconcerting, but it's like, great. Now you have eight title deeds with your name. The only thing you can guarantee is that you have a place to be buried yeah. when you die because you own the land, but yeah. is it usable? Yeah. What can you do on that piece of land today? Is it going to be worth value for someone else in the future if you want to sell? If there's 3,000 of you on 50 by 100s with no utilities, what value is there for me 10 years from now coming yeah. to buy? Yeah. You know, and, and this, is, this is where our, our conviction around uh, master planning, holistic thinking, came into play and uh, I, I hope that's a conversation we can keep having. Yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted, because I never really asked you, I never got a chance to ask you, what, for you, what was the most uh, exciting part of, of this exercise about the site? What did you like the most? Because uh, if, if I'm allowed to say so, you referred us to a dear uh, uh, member of your family who is now one of our precious customers at yeah. the yeah. uh, No pressure to us because... Now nah, you have to deliver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we don't deliver, you know, uh, the architect is going to hear about it. Yeah. Uh, but what was it about the site that gave you enough confidence to refer us to a, a beloved family member? Yeah, so, so a couple of things. Number one, and you've touched about the value and uh, one of the biggest uh, issues around land acquisition. And I don't know why we are so hell-bent on having so many plots of land that you purchase and you feel that that is value. Yeah. Um, I think for, for me, when, when I'm doing a master plan, rather than think about subdivisions that somebody can buy and say you have one plot here, one plot there, one plot there, and yeah. that's the value you have. I think when we're designing a master plan, it's about creating something that is so unique that you can say you have one, yes. that's where you will develop. Yeah. And me as a designer, I need to design it as though I would develop as well to stay in the same master right. plan. Yeah, yeah. And that's for me, that's a value. If I can stay in it, yes. and I'm not only looking at it from a commercial point of view where I'll get my fees to do the master plan, you get your income in terms of, in terms of what your sales are from the subdivisions. Am I designing something that I can sit back and say, look, beyond me investing in this for the value that will come from, you know, appreciation in the land, yeah. can I also stay in it? Because th there needs to be this notion that everyone moves away from, that you buy, you buy, there's an appreciation in value, you sell to go and buy in a premium place. Right. Why can't you buy one or two properties in very well master plan communities that eventually the decision is easier. Yeah. I either live here or I live here. Yeah. Not that I have 10 different plots, they're gaining value and then I'll sell them and then I'll go look for a piece of land somewhere else. Yeah. So yeah. for me that was one of the things that was very key when I was doing the master plan. It has to be something that I can live in. Yeah. Now I think some of the conversations we had with you, and it's a test to understand, is this master planner also thinking the same? Um, as I was doing the master plan, we were discussing what plots would you also build on? 
and one of the things that was interesting for me is to see that appreciation from you uh, that you're not looking at this as only a commercial uh, development that you sell off and you're out it's are you also proud enough as a master mm. developer to one one uh, not to sell yes, yes. 50 and remain with 100 to appreciate in value. Yeah. Are you confident enough that the, the, the master plan, the, the development you're putting up, you also want to stay in it? Um, so I, I remember we parked our cars at one point and it was my truck and your car. And I took a couple of pictures and they said, hey, Solomon could be my neighbor if I actually design this and we could end up living next to each other. Now, mm. that appreciation was also there in terms of how much spend we had to walk the entire site and see all the unique elements around the site. Because it wasn't just a discussion that says, look, here's a title, mm. give me the best subdivision, I don't care about the, the topo, the contour, yeah, yeah. we'll sell. Maximize so, the number let's of Let's maximize plots. the number of plots and yeah. we sell as much as we can. That yeah. wasn't the consideration. Um, I think it's very important that um, a, a lot of people take that very seriously. Is uh, you know when you when when the architect or the planner is designing this, are they designing it and they put their name to it at a point where they say they can sell? So I when I was master planning, I wasn't master planning it for my sister to purchase. Mm. You understand? Mm. Later they came and told me, hey, listen, I need to buy something and build and stay in the new. And I said, look. I designed something that even you yourself can stay in because mm. I designed it in a manner that I could stay in. Right. And the master developer has the same uh, approach in terms of what they're creating as a community. Yeah. Uh, I think the attempt to move my whole family there almost worked <laughs> because I think several times I've taken several people to yeah. see, you've yeah. seen the images. Yeah. Uh, and it, that has to be the first starting point is mm. what is this site? What are the vistas I'm getting? What are the views? There's uh, access to a dam. I've created enough public spaces where, and, and by the way, the shape of that road, in as much as it says you're following the contours, that's a perfect jogging track. Yeah, you know, we were talking about yeah, working yeah. out earlier today. Yeah, yeah. 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 We'll, we'll be we'll neighbors <laughs> and then we'll do the rap. <laughs> we'll, so, we'll keep talking. So yeah, yeah, jogging tracks. Yeah, so you, you create all this with the idea as well that you're designing, you can stay there as well. Yeah. It can promote the lifestyle that you aspire to. Lifestyle, yes. yes, yes. Yeah. Lifestyle that you aspire to. And you're not only looking at master planning, selling, purchasing, value add, then I go purchase something else yes. that I subscribe to my lifestyle. I can also stay here. Right. Yeah. Now that's a fair point. And you know, um, with regards to that trajectory you just described, that yes. journey of, you know, I want to I wanna own uh, an acre or half an acre in current one day. I don't have the tombs now. Yeah. I don't have the money now. I have 300k. I can buy a 50 by 100 and hopefully in five years, whatever, 10 years, I can sell it for X millions of shillings, hopefully. Yeah. Mm. And like I said, combine however many I've sold mm. to buy the half acre in current. Yeah. You know, I don't think there's any ro anything wrong with that approach. My thing is though, as you're doing that, you have to keep in mind that the 50 by 100 or the quarter or the half acre that you're buying today, is it going to be valuable to someone else in the future? Yeah. What, what's going to make it valuable? Yeah. It's a value add, mm -hmm. amenities, the, the planned approach. Yes. Uh, it's going to be desirable to someone else. Yes. And there's only 80 of them. Yes. There's not there's no 3,000 of them. Yes. So, I mean, uh, mathematically speaking, if we chopped this 47.78 acre piece of land into 50 by 100s, we'd have nearly 400 plots. Yes. Uh, which makes a lot more business sense for me. Yeah. Because uh, they sell faster, because they're cheaper, yeah. easier on the pocket, but they're horrible value for our customers. Yeah. And for my customer, I would say, as you're planning on selling that thing in the future for capital gains yeah. or to grow your savings, are you sure you're going to be able to find a buyer who wants it? Because there's so many of you with zero utilities. Yeah. And I said it before, people think it's a bit harsh, but it's a reality. Yeah. If you just look, survey, survey Nairobi mm. or any urban node in, in Kenya, 50 by 100s or smaller 40 by 60s with zero utilities mm. are nothing more than a seed for future slums. Yeah. You know, and, and when I say that, people, you know, people sort of get shocked. Mm. Um, 
but I, I fail to see how that is not the logical conclusion. And if you're making a decision to buy now, uh, you need to be aware of that. Would you, would you agree with my, uh, with my assessment on that? No, no, I agree with your assessment. And you asked the question earlier, you know, what was one of the unique things about coming to the site as well? And in terms of assessing that, you see, I always talk about three connections when you're looking at uh, buildings or master planning. So the first connection being connection to the place. We've talked about the place. It's in Nanyuki, yeah. what are the existing area, what are the vistas, what's the natural vegetation. Yeah. I think another thing that we shouldn't belabor here is connection to spaces. We've talked about different spaces that you're creating around the community, yes. right? But more importantly is what connections are you going to create with the people that are going to be staying in the master plan. And for me, that's a full value. Mm. So our, 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 our going to the site, first of all, had you as a master developer. Mm -hmm. And if you remember these conversations, there was buyers, potential buyers, who you were taking to see the site. Yeah. And there was a lot of conversation, even before I put any pen to paper, yes. around the people and what they're trying to achieve. Yes. So we spent a lot of time having that conversation on a drive up to the Yuki. So for me, developing the master plan wasn't detached from who you're de developing. Developing for, yeah, So absolutely. The, the conversation there started, and I, I really got to applaud you for that, because it wasn't just me and you driving up to the right. and saying, hey, we're going to do a master plan, we sell, and uh, you know, you get value for right. what the master yeah. plan is. There was also other elements. Yeah. There was people who were going to be purchasing the community and, and staying in the same master plan. Yeah. And th there was a lot of information we were getting from them. What's their aspirations? What kind of uh, conversations were they having with us? What, yes. what then can you create as a community that would really promote that? Because it would have been really bad to do that whole drive, yeah. Yeah. connect with your potential buyers, and then develop something that does not promote that conversation. Their aspirations, their lifestyle. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, those are three connections I've talked about there. Yeah. You know, uh, there is a place, which was obvious. Yeah, the place. site is amazing, yeah. Okay. There's uh, spaces that we're going to go create because you are aligned on that. Yep. And then last thing for me is what is that connection with the people? Yeah, the people. And, and, and your question around how I designed the master plan and so that eventually I can say, tell a family member, listen, go buy this. That's a connection with the people. But it didn't yeah. start with my family member. It was actually, yes, yes. am I listening to the buyers, potential buyers? Yes. What are their aspirations so that I can link them up to somebody who's similar yeah, yeah. in their thinking? Yeah. And that's a community you're creating. That's a Excellent. Community you're creating. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because I yeah. remember that particular couple. They are very picky couple, yes. actually. Very high standards. Yeah. Um, uh, though, I mean, it was a couple that I aspire uh, to be like, honestly speaking. Yeah. And it, it was a privilege to have them on site and hear their appreciation for this, that or the other. Yeah. But that's exactly the point. It's about building communities yes. of people. At the end of the day, it's about the people. Yes. And if it doesn't uh, give dignity to their, yes. their experience yes. during the purchase, during their ownership, yes. uh, which sets them up for sales later if they choose to sell, or pass it on to their children or grandchildren, yeah. then we've missed a plot. Yeah. Uh, and I have to say, at Grand Acres and Goshen Acquisitions, all our customers, we, we, we have like the best uh, groupings of people yeah. to count as our customers, our communities. Yeah. Uh, who are buying these spaces and owning their pieces of Kenya, whether it's in Nanyuki, whether it's Naivasha, Elementaita and elsewhere. Uh, and it's something I'm, I'm proud, proud about and hope, hoping I can, I can keep going with the help and the support uh, of, uh, of professionals like yourself. Yes. And, so, and so, so where is this conversation taking us? And I'll tell you where. Mm. So we've done a very nice master plan. There is, of course, um, subdivisions, the sales that have gone forward. And I think for me, the bigger conversation that hasn't stopped for you as a master developer and also for me as a designer yeah. with family you're going to stay here is, so what's the character? What's the character of the community? So mm. I think master planning can't just stop at, yes, you've done some subdivisions, people come now and they build and everyone is building 
in, in houses facing each other, all awkward, uh, awkward conditions and directions. Uh, I yeah. think the next level is really coming up with guidelines. Mm. And, and, and one of the things I get to commend you on is we've already set a standard on aesthetic. Because again, listening to the end yeah. buyers, yeah. not everyone is clued on what it is that they want from an aesthetic and a standard or an the look and feel, the look and, feel. Yeah. and the look and feel doesn't only stop at the buildings because that's where people rush to yeah is what's the look and feel of your urban scape right. of your roads your road, we talked a little yeah. bit about it yeah so do you develop a road and you detail it as a road that you would see in current no you're in the new kid there's a different context sure. so we paid a lot of attention to what that feel is of course we've created a very unique and interesting look on your boundary wall yes um, and, and the boundary wall of course we say there's a very you know narrow throat to the plots that's front facing to the street yeah um, but there's a lot of thought into designing that one again you contextualize the materials that you're going to use within the roads of the urban scape yeah to be materials that are locally available in a new key Mm -hmm. and they speak to the area. So already there's an aesthetic set with the boundary wall at the front. Yes, the language has been... The language has been uh, set. Yeah. It's not restrictive. I think it's more of a guideline. Yeah. And, and the next level would be to say, all right, do you develop guidelines that limit developments to certain heights? Mm -hmm. I think everyone at Acacia Cove wants the view. Of course, everyone wants exactly. a mountain view. Yeah. Exactly. So do I build one tall building here that blocks everyone from the view of the mountain? Yeah. Uh, so the, the, the next level is again to create guidelines so that the community and the people who buy here develop not buildings that look the same yes. standard, but yeah. there's some thought and guidelines in terms of how they develop. Yeah, yeah. Are all buildings two stories? Are all buildings limited yes. to three stories that's a, no, that's a what great are the point, setbacks yeah. yeah what are your ground coverages mm. uh, that control how big a development and house you put in yeah so those are some of the things to really now develop to the next level yeah well that's that's definitely in the works yes. um, and for those of you who've asked us before you know andrew and the team will develop uh in in a short period of time uh will develop because right now we're working on the infrastructure civil works designs and so on uh, and I have to say, you guys did a super job on the gatehouse. Yes. Uh, we'll share cutaways of what that looks like uh, now, and you can compare it to what it looked like when it's built. Uh, but in terms of the the buildings, you know, we will share uh, designed floor plans and aesthetics profiles and so on yeah. uh, for for you to take and run with. For those of you who've bought or think you're buying, so that you're not spending time designing the home because it'll have been well thought out by the design team. Yeah. Uh, or you can amend and change depending on your personal needs. If you have a big family, you can make the floor plan bigger. If you're smaller, maybe you want a smaller footprint. But the guidelines are in place to say you can only use this range of materiality, materials, that's what materiality means. Uh, every time I use those, uh, those Com words, I see Richie back there <laughs> telling me to simplify. Uh, but yes, this is, this is not your run-of-the-mill subdivision, buy a half acre and it's, it's done and dusted. No, we are in the business of building communities yes. and we're looking forward to seeing this through to communities of people enjoying the spaces and breathing life into it. And so I hope that answers for some of you who sent in those questions around, will you provide me design plans? Yes, um, and there will be guidelines. Some will be restricted to ground only because of the topographical changes. Yeah. The guys on the higher plane will be limited to ground level. The guys slightly lower can go ground plus one yeah. so that they have views yeah. of the mountain, which is one of the reasons most of us love Nanyuki. Yes. Uh, so that's a great point. And, yeah. um, and, and, and I think it's also important for, for the buyers and, and people who are looking at, you know, setting up communities here to understand that these controls are not restrictions. Yeah. They're actually just guidelines. Yeah. Uh, they'll make for beyond what we've described there as a healthy community with all the amenities that are provided right from the water to the wastewater treatment plant. They'll also make for, you know, uh, an aesthetic that they'll be comfortable that the, 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 the rest of the developments that are being done on the master plan um, 
conform or pay the respect to what they're also developing. So we always say that these uh, guidelines should be taken as just that, guidelines. Mm. Mm. Uh, of course, we'll encourage anyone who wants to talk to us about design of the units. Yeah, absolutely. And I highly recommend, not. I mean, uh, that's, that's our uh, encouragement to all our customers. Yes. Boo Hackman and Associates uh, are available to work with you on an individual basis, if you like, to develop your, your personal taste, look and feel for the houses. That's what they do in their sleep. Yeah. Uh, and they have an amazing track record. If you've never heard of Boo Hackman and Associates, just go to their website. We'll include a link at the bottom of the video. Check out uh, their works. It's long, it's exhaustive, and it's impressive as well. Sure and I'm sure you'll recognize some of their work, places and spaces you've been to that you didn't know they had something to do with. Yeah. Um, so with that, you know, I'll say thank you, Andrew. Yes. For making time to come chat, yeah. give people an idea about the back end of things, yeah. how we went about producing that. A lot of work and time goes into this process. Yeah. Um, it's not, a, you know, at Goshen Acquisitions, I can't speak for everyone in the, in, the, in the industry, but at Goshen Acquisitions and Grand Acres, we are serious about what we're trying to do. And so hopefully this gives you a little bit of an insight about what goes on in the background before we make noise about something that we're offering you as a general public, the investing public, to take advantage of. So thank you for your attention. If you have questions, send them through. Uh, if you're interested in linking up with uh, Andrew and his amazing team at Buchartman and Associates, uh, check out the link with all their contacts. Um, and uh, we look forward to engaging you further as we go about the business of building communities. Yeah, and Solomon, in closing, I think this conversation doesn't stop here. Um, this year, Buchartman and Partners, we're celebrating our 10th year of in course. Kenya. Congratulations. 40th, exactly, thanks. And 40th year uh, as a farm you know, their headquarters in South Africa. Yeah. Uh, we are hosting an open studio this year, October 13th and 14th. Of course, Goshen Acquisitions, um, Grand Acres need to be part of that conversation. It's an open studio that is talking various aspects around uh, creating a vernacular architecture. Mm -hmm. What's a vernacular architecture? Right. But for me, the bigger answer, and maybe we'll talk about it more and then, is around context. The vernacular is informed by, by the, the context. context. So it will be really interesting to showcase your project in that conversation because yeah. this is one project we are really proud of having master plan uh, to respect the context. So yeah. you're welcome. We look forward thank to you. continuing thank the conversation. You. Yeah, and is that is that uh, going to be open to the public? It's going to be open to the public. There will be a series of panels and I'm signing you up. <laughs> no worries, I'll send you my invoice. Sure, no worries. <laughs> Pay but, me the fees, then yeah. you send the invoice. <laughs> Th thank you. Uh, I mean, I, I should say at Goshen Acquisitions, we're also celebrating our 10th anniversary. Awesome. Uh, so, good job on keeping the vision alive yes. and uh, going through the motions with yes. passion. Yes. And to another 100 years, hopefully. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Awesome. Definitely. Awesome. So in case you're wondering, how do I get uh, my piece of Acacia Cove? Get on our website as quickly as you can. That's www.goshenacquisitions.com or you can go to www.grandacres.co.ke. Check out the links there. There'll be one specific to Acacia Cove. Fill in your details. It'll automatically send you the brochure, including the sitemap to show you what is available versus what is gone. As I mentioned before, they are 80 half acre parcels of land professionally master plan. I believe we're about 60% sold out uh, as of today. So not too many of those available. And I believe we only have one remaining as of today at 3.99 million shillings for half an acre. As we execute on the value addition we just talked about, we will be increasing the prices. As always, as a land developer, we reserve the right to change pricing because it is informed by all the work that's going into the ground. So take advantage today. Don't waste time. Give us a call and we'll be happy to arrange for site visits if necessary. So thanks for tuning in and uh, uh, stay tuned for, for the next conversation. Cheers.